Hi everybody, Jimmy Mix here and today I want to show you how to use lock wheels in color grading after the intro. You already know that the lock wheels works different than the primaries wheels. And what you need to know first is that the lock wheels were designed to work with lock footage. But how do they work exactly? And what's the difference between the primaries and the lock wheels? Let me show you something in this gradient. If I drag my lift in the primaries to the left, I decrease the blacks in my image. As you can see in the waveform, the wall line is affected. All luminance values are impacted, not only the blacks, no, all. That what you be aware of if you are using the primaries wheels. In the primaries we have lift, gamma and gain, representing the darker part of our image, the midtones and the lightest parts. On the other hand, in the lock wheels we have shadow, midtone and highlight. In general, it's very similar in meaning, finally it's the same, but they work totally different. If I move my luminance slider to the shadow in the lock wheels instead of the lift in the primaries, only the darker parts are affected. From here on upwards, the values will not be impacted. It's the same in the highlights and midtone. Let's reset that. If I now drag the highlight to the left, only the lighter parts are impacted. The darker parts will be untouched. And finally, the same with the midtone. If I drag the midtone slider, we only affect the midtone range. So we have ranges for the shadows, midtone and highlight. And we can impact this range or affect the transitions between these ranges just by using the low range and high range slider here in the color wheels. So if I increase the midtone, for example, you see this bow in the midtones in the waveform. If I now decrease the low range, the falling side of the midtone bow or curve moves further and further to the left because this part between the midtone bow and the distance to the lower left point of this curve represents this low range. That means if I change the value of this low range, I just shorten this distance or this range between the midtone and the total blacks. And that's the same in the other direction. Let's reset this low range. If I increase the highlight, I narrow the distance between the total white, this most top right value and the midtones. I guess you got it. Let's reset that again. So if I now change the shadow and highlight, you can see how it works. The midtones are only very less impacted and here in the range between 384 and 512, all values will stay the same. So finally, the lock wheels addresses only specific ranges of luminance and leaves the other ranges untouched. And that's the main difference between the primaries and the lock wheels. Okay, let's reset that. If I increase the shadows and decrease the highlight, I got this more flat looking image. Now look at this. If I bring in some colors in the shadows and highlight, for example, blue for the shadows and orange for the highlights, I only affect this ranges, but not the midtone range. And that's very important to understand because with the lock wheels, we are able to bring in different shadows, sorry, shades in our shadows, midtones and highlights without affecting the other ranges. You can see it best if I bring in some magenta in the midtone, for example, and crank up my saturation. Can you see this very smooth transition between the shadow, midtone, and highlight ranges? Okay, let's see what the lock wheels can do using real footage. If I switch to this clip here and using the lock wheels to bring in a bit bluish shades into the shadows, I can limit this effect by decreasing my low range. Same in the highlights. If I push a bit cyan into the highlights, I can limit the high range by increasing the high range. 
and finally the midtones. If I bring in some orange, only the midtones will be impacted. I have an exercise for you. Try to achieve the same effect with the primary wheels. <laughs> and finally a question about another topic. Are you interested to see some footage of the new Canon C500 Mark II? Let me know in the comments. And that's it. If you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching and listening. As always, you all a great time. Bye.